and welcome to the MBOM podcast, where you'll learn to master the business of yoga. MBOM is a proud part of the Wander Barn Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Amanda Kingsmith. I'm a 500 hour registered yoga teacher, a yoga business coach, and a total business geek. Here at MBOM, you'll learn everything you need to know to create a sustainable yoga business by learning from myself and guests from around the world about how they built their yoga businesses and about how you too can become a successful yoga teacher, studio owner, and much more. All right, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mastering the Business of Yoga. I am really excited that you're joining me for today's episode of the show. Today on the podcast, I have a very awesome guest for you. Her name is Isabel. She's an ecstatic dance DJ, movement medicine teacher, sound technician, and sound therapist. She holds classes, workshops, retreats, and ceremonies around the world. She hosts a monthly radio show on Open Lab, Music Medicine, and runs an online DJ course, DJ Mystery to Mastery, is a heart-based approach to the art of mixing music. And I am super excited for this conversation because we're going to dive into all things having to do with music, Uh, her passion for music, why music is important in yoga classes, how it can add to the vibe or the atmosphere, even create that. And then of course, we'll talk a little bit of business, a little bit about business as well. So I'm very, very excited to dive in. And Isabel, welcome to the show today. Hi there. Great to be here. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Where are you joining us from today? Right now I'm sat in London, but I'm just here for this week. Usually I'm based in Ibiza, which is a small island off the coast of Spain in Europe. Amazing. Yeah. I've been there one time like a decade ago, so it's been a long (laughs) time, but definitely like a good place if you're into music. I know we went and saw like a couple of DJs while we were there. Yeah, absolutely. There are sort of two sides to the island. People tend to know about the one side, which is the clubs and the big DJs and the party scene, definite part of Ibiza. But the other side in the north is, you know, very much more a kind of conscious spiritual community, lots of yoga, lots of dance, beautiful nature. So yeah, I like the both sides. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know I have a couple of friends who have hosted yoga retreats there before. And my experience was in my early 20s going to some of those clubs and seeing (laughs) DJs and stuff. And I was like, yoga retreats there. That's that's interesting. But it really does have like both sides of those, just depending on what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a great believer in a life of balance. So, you know, um, going out to a club is great and having a good old dance. And then, yeah, going into retreat and doing yoga is also great. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. Amazing. Well, can you start by just telling us a little bit about your journey with yoga, how you first got into yoga? Yeah, sure. So I really got into yoga when I left university, which is going back a bit now, over 20 years ago. Um, I kind of grew up as a, I guess, quite a spiritual kid. I learned how to meditate when I was about seven, eight years old. My mom taught me transcendental meditation. So I kind of got on that path quite early and then as a teenager got off the path and um, went to the raves and the clubs and got into that scene quite heavily. And then it was after university that I I moved to London and I was sort of my interest was perking again in terms of consciousness and spirituality. And I started going to some yoga classes regularly And really, that was my gateway back into that aspect of my life. And I just loved it, loved it and went and did lots of classes in India after that. And yeah, everything kind of snowballed and that sort of led me into the conscious dance scene as well. So I have yoga to thank for really the work that I do now. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. And that's I wanted to ask you kind of how your your connection to music came to be as well, like, and then how you came to connect yoga and music and then dance as well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting when I look back on my life now, like having, having chosen my path, things make sense in a way that they perhaps didn't at the time. As I said, I kind of got into clubbing and raving when I was a teenager. And I used to love like just holding a spot by the speakers and dancing for hours and hours at a time and 
the community aspect of that and the coming together with a diverse sector of people. And yeah, it really enriched me and fueled my fire. And when I went to university, I did a modern medieval history degree and wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with my life and applied for a few graduate training schemes in very corporate positions. And then remember sort of sitting in my bedroom and and like, I I don't want to do I don't want to do any of this corporate stuff. And I really like looked inward and I asked my heart, what do I love? What do I really, really love? And my answer was music and movement and, and, you know, healing through that. And that actually led me into a career in the music industry. I was working mostly in electronic music for 20 years, 10 years of which I spent as a producer at BBC Radio 1 and 1 Extra, which is like the biggest um, radio station in the UK for music and for young people. And that was great. I loved, loved that industry and I loved that job. But it kind of got to a point where I was getting a little bit older. And as I said, my interest in spirituality was kind of coming back into my life and I saw the the clubbing kind of lost its interest. And and that's when I went on this kind of path of discovery and and found conscious dance, which I don't know if your listeners have kind of come across ecstatic dance, movement medicine, five rhythms before, but it's essentially a moving meditation. So we dance freely to music for healing, for health, to change some of our stories to heal some trauma and really reconnect with our soul purpose so for me like the 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 music and the movement has always been connected and it was kind of used to be a a music industry one side of a Ibiza kind of scene and now it's very much health and well-being and like the other side of Ibiza scene yeah that's really cool to hear and um yeah I think ecstatic dance is just like something that's really, really magical. It feels so good in the body. And I think that it's really interesting because as yoga teachers, we often know the power of movement, but maybe yeah. maybe dance makes us uncomfortable or we think we're bad at it or something like that. And one of the things that I love about ecstatic dance is that it's not about choreography or following mm-hmm. the rhythm or anything like that. It's just about tuning into our body and moving really intuitively, which I think as yogis, as yoga teachers, we really understand you know, how powerful that can be. And so it's really cool that you were able to to do that. And then another thing I wanted to touch on is just because I had a similar sort of, I guess, escape from the corporate world, but I think maybe I was like into it a little bit further than what it sounds like you were. I worked for a couple of years before really tuning into like, this isn't for me. And Mm. I just want to acknowledge that because I think that sometimes it's really hard, especially when we're young and society is kind of telling us this is the path you need to go. And then obviously we have bills we need to pay and all of that type of reality. It's sometimes so hard to tune into that intuition and to like our gut feeling and be like, what do I actually want to do? And then pursue it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really difficult with all the societal conditioning, with the pressure that perhaps we get from, you know, parents or teachers or, you know, the the world in general, but to, I think to really, really follow the heart has ultimate, you know, rewards that that are beyond any of that conditioning. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so what did your path look like? So you decided, okay, corporate's not for me. I'm applying for jobs. I'm looking for jobs. This is like, there's probably some resistance here, not really feeling passionate about it. I'm going to go pursue things that I like. What was that kind of journey like to get you to where you are now with your business? Um, definite ups and downs, I think, as with any business, you know, moments of am I doing the right thing? Am I completely crazy? Wouldn't it be easier if I had a white picket fence and a nice paycheck at the the end of the month? Um, But I haven't regretted any of my choices. And I feel I'm in a place now where to be working for myself and to have the freedom to make my own choices, you know, even to know where I'm spending one week or the next week and the travel and to meet lots of different 
people from all around the world is such a blessing um, that I'm really glad that I've stuck with it, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so maybe we can dive into a little bit around music and music and yoga classes specifically, because it's mostly yoga teachers listening to the show. Mm. I'd love to hear a little bit about just sort of, you know, why you think music is important. And then maybe we can dive into a little bit of like how you actually use music in classes and some suggestions for people. Because I feel like this is a topic where, you know, some people use music, feel very strongly about that. Some people don't use music and maybe that's Mm. because they don't know how to create a playlist or um, Mm. they're just not sure what to use to create the appropriate atmosphere or maybe they just feel like music kind of takes away from the actual experience so i'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on that Mm, mm, absolutely well it's really interesting at the moment that the science that's coming out is beginning to back up what certain people have known for thousands and thousands of years is that Sound and music heals just in itself, you know. So the way that the sound vibrates and moves through the air has an effect on the cells in our body. Our our body vibrates, our frequency changes with the frequency of music. Um, Some of your listeners might have heard of this amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score. There's a guy called Jamie Will who says the issues are in the tissues. And we're really starting to understand now now that we hold all of our experience in our body, which is why a practice like yoga is so vital for our health and well-being. Because when we're moving the body, we're moving some of that trauma, we're creating space. Um, We are literally allowing our body to heal itself. And when you combine a powerful movement practice like yoga with the healing powers of music, there's this opportunity to really supercharge the medicine that comes through. And I feel that You know, now is the time when there's so much music around in popular culture and there's so many good kind of DJ sets. You know, you can here in the UK, you can go to the supermarket and there's a soundtrack in the background. Don't know if it's the same in the malls over there, but, you know, you go into any bar or any kind of shop and there's a soundtrack playing. And we're really kind of, you know, music sets a mood and sets a tone as well as kind of the the physical aspect of the healing. And so, you know, incorporating it into a practice can really add another dimension and a different experience, I believe, to the clients. You know, we're so used to music that going into a yoga class and, and hearing that music as a support, and I think that's something kind of interesting to note the music doesn't have to take away from the class or the practice it's really there as a support as another way of creating an atmosphere that's conducive to the client's experience and another way of creating healing in the body heart and mind so yeah I think I think using music in yoga classes can really separate a good class from a great class. And, you know, with so many good yoga classes on offer at the moment, kind of coming with a a unique soundtrack or coming with particular tracks that support different aspects of the practice can really add another dimension, another element and kind of capture those those people that are looking for unique experiences. So, you know, I believe very passionately that it, that it can really add to a yoga offering and also, you know, for, for the teachers as well to, to give them a creative outlet or to reconnect with their creativity and with their joy, because working with music I think for for most people is is a real joy, you know. If you love music, then anyone can learn to work with it and work with it well. And that's only going to have benefits for, you know, the, the practitioner, the person giving the class and the people, the clients coming to the classes. Hey, you teacher. 
Are you the kind of person who dreads updating their website? Do you lie awake at night wondering if you sent out the wrong Zoom link for your class tomorrow morning? If you're nodding your head right now, you are not alone. I am right there with you. And that's why I love telling yoga teachers about Offering Tree. They're an all-in-one software company with everything you need to run your yoga business. I know that sounds almost impossible, but seriously, they are a one-stop shop for everything that you need to run your business. They integrate with Zoom and automatically create meeting links. And everyone who visits your website sees your offerings listed in the correct local time zones. And I've worked with the people behind Offering Tree for a few years now, and I can honestly say that they really care and really listen to what yoga teachers need. So don't lose any more sleep over your website. Don't have any more headaches about what software is going to be best for you and if it has the right tools that you need for your business. If you want your yoga business to get online with less stress, more ease, and for an affordable rate, try out Offering Tree. You can try it completely for free. And if you decide that it's right for you, I have a special discount to share with you. It's offeringtree.com forward slash MBOM to get 50% off the first three months. Once again, that's offeringtree.com forward slash MBOM. All right, now back to the show. Thank you for sharing all of that. And it's really cool to hear like the science around that as well and know that there is, you know, studies with that. And I was just thinking as you were talking about, sure. you know, my own experiences with music and in, in yoga classes and I feel like when it's done well, I really love how music can add to the experience. And I know some people say like, oh, you know, it takes people out of like their breath or their body or their mind or, you know, whatever. But I actually feel like it helps me kind of get into that space because I have, you know, such a busy mind as we all do as humans, you know, thinking Mm -hmm. about a million things. And especially when I came to yoga from corporate um, and I'd be working all day, stressful job, busy life, busy schedule. Mm -hmm. And I'd come to yoga and it's like, I have one hour to myself. And instead of thinking about my to-do list or what I was doing after class, if I could just get into my body and breath, that was something that was, you know, really, really magical for me and felt really good. And a really good playlist could, could certainly help me with that. And, um, I have a, a good yoga teacher friend who has a music degree and she's like, I love going to her classes because her playlists are always so well done. Mm. But I always felt like for me as a yoga teacher that I struggled a little bit with playlists. So I'm curious Mm -hmm. your thoughts on that. For those of us who are maybe like, I love music. I feel like I I listen well to music. I have a good ear for it. But sometimes it's hard to kind of figure out, okay, this is going to be sort of my general flow of the class. Like, what's a good song for this? How do we... If we're if somebody else is like me, where it's like we don't have necessarily a background in music or like a natural sort of, um, I guess, gift for this, how do we start creating playlists that can create really beautiful experiences for our students? Yeah, I mean, well, I would say first of all that music, like anything, is a learnable skill, and there are some really basic tools and tips and techniques that anyone can incorporate into their classes regardless of their level of musical knowledge or how good or bad that they feel that they are at that sort of thing. Um, So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Um, It's really interesting also that you mentioned, you know, kind of the breath and music because, you know, when I'm building sets and when I'm working specifically with yoga teachers, you know, quite often the class begins in a gentle space or, you know, there may be music when people are arriving. And this is the, there's a kind of correlation between music and the way that our body works in the sense that uh, there are a lot of tracks at 60 BPM. So BPM stands for beats per minute, which is literally the number of beats in one minute of time. And 60 BPM is the um, the speed of the heart at a normal resting state. So a track that is around 60 BPM is a great track to kind of begin the playlist. And as the postures get more dynamic and the class kind of continues on in that journey, a really useful way of kind of picking tracks, and you can do this in iTunes, you can do this in DJ software as well, 
is is just to kind of raise the BPMs and work with different speeds of tracks um, to kind of align with the journey of the class, essentially, and sort of create that arc of music. So building up and then dropping down again from, you know, maybe 120, 140, maybe 150 BPM, which is when our heartbeat is really going fast in in good, strong exercise and dropping it down at the end of the class to about 60 BPM again. So we can settle the body. And that's where the music really works with the physical practice of yoga. Um, I'd also, you know, I'd also say when picking playlists, there's no right and there's no wrong, essentially, you know, pick the music that you love, that moves you, because there's no point trying to pick tunes just because other people have got them or lots of yoga teachers are working with them. Actually, it's better to pick something unique to you because that's then something that you're uniquely offering your clients so pick music that you love and know that you can't get it wrong if you do that and um I mean I would also say some I say so some of my clients my yoga teacher clients just try and uh, avoid really recognizable songs because the recognizable songs often take people into their minds so there'll be stories attached you know it might be oh you hear a, a track and and again this can be This can be a technique that we use as as health and well-being practitioners. Um, But, you know, if there's a track that takes you, is very recognizable and maybe has lyrics and it takes you into a story. Oh, I remember that was when I first fell in love or, um, you know, it can be any kind of good or bad association. But really with movement practices, we want to avoid that nine times out of 10. Sometimes it works just to kind of drop something like that in. But most of the time, it's good to have instrumental music and tunes that are perhaps not recognizable, not in the charts, not, you know, out being played in the world, because that, as I said, takes people to their minds and we want to keep people in their bodies. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. That definitely makes sense. And so music without lyrics or if you're going to use music with lyrics like lyrics that somebody's not probably familiar with so they're not coming back to a memory of when they were in their car or hearing that song or not wanting to like sing along to it and that type of thing yeah yeah exactly and you know also be conscious with the the lyrics that you choose you know I try and avoid anything that I'm not fully aligned with in terms of lyrics but then you know there are some tunes with lyrics that are really supportive of the practice maybe it's about you know tuning in to something deeper or being more aware of the natural environment or you know just just something beautiful (laughs) and kind um, I think can really be incredibly heart opening as well. So it's really being conscious with the with the choice of lyrics. And and again, you know, picking the right track is really supportive of someone's journey. It can really give them a boost, you know, uh, like maybe when things are getting tough in a class and, you know, you're holding postures for a while or, you know, there's the heartbeats really going. It's like, Oh, something with with more beats or with an inspirational, motivational lyric can really, you know, get the client to push through that place of resistance. Um, and you know, a lot of music is in a four-four time signature. A lot of ele- electronic music is anyway. And so, this four-four time signature can really like help with the with the breath. You know, you can speed up the music as the breath is getting quicker and the breath really works with that one, two, three, four, like inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale. So again, you know, you can go really deep with it. You don't have to, you know, and I think that's important to mention as well. It's like go as far as you want to go with it. There's a a vast world to explore in terms of music and health and well-being and just a few tools and techniques will really enhance 
um, the classes if you're using music and if you want to go ahead and use music. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. And I have a question. I don't know if this is like a silly question or not, but maybe it comes from just not having a lot of experience with music. But how do you like figure out the beats per minute? Like, is there a way to kind of count that yourself? Um, I'm assuming after time doing this, there's something that's maybe a bit more intuitive about, you know, the tempo and, and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, how do we figure that out? <laughs> yeah, first First of all, I, there's no such thing as a silly question. I believe that it doesn't exist. All questions are useful questions. And, and that's a great question. Um, there's Technology is amazing. There's tools, there's software, there's things that you can have on your computer that basically tell you the beats per minute. We don't have to work it out ourselves. I mean, you know, back in the day, it would be um, getting, literally getting a, a, um, a clock or a watch and counting the beats that whilst the, the minute, the second hand goes round until a minute comes up, you know, we don't have to do that anymore. Um, you can just go online and you'll be told the BPM of a track. Um, like I say, there's lots of software now that you can put your music in and it gives you all this information. Um, and you know, you can feel it. It doesn't have to be exact on the BPM, but you feel in your body, everybody knows whether they believe they're musical or not. Everybody knows that there's, it's a kind of roughly 60 BPM track without saying 60 BPM track is if you feel calm and, you know, it's softer and you don't want to like run around the room listening to it you want to sit in a chair and you know when the track is going to be you know 120 130 bpm without using that kind of terminology when you're listening to a track and you feel like you want to dance or run around the garden you know <laughs> yeah yeah for sure that definitely makes sense and that's cool to hear that there's like software and stuff like that so if somebody wanted to figure this mm. out they could just google like BPM for a song or do you have any recommended sites or softwares that they could use? Yeah, I mean, Google is a wonderful thing. And I use a software called Tractor Pro 3. That's the software that I use. And, you know, I will put a piece of music in there and it will tell me or it will automatically analyze um, the, the BPM, also the key. So every piece of music has a key. Um, I don't know, maybe some of your listeners learn an instrument back in the day or do play instruments now. And it's like those scales when you go up and down the piano, there are notes on the piano and and that's a key, C, B, G, A. And again, you don't have to be musically trained to work with keys in um, in music and for music for, for yoga classes, um, but they are a great way of, of accessing deeper healing um, because certain keys induce certain emotions. So me- there are two types, main types of key, major and minor. And the major keys, you know, are very expansive, heart opening, usually feel kind of, you know, kind of aligned. And then the minor keys are a bit more kind of internal um a bit more kind of, yeah, going going inwards, a uh, little bit more discordant. So might kind of not make you feel so at ease. So these are kind of the things that I teach as well um, in the DJ Mystery to Mastery program about how to use these things for practices like yoga, how to use these things to supercharge your own medicine. All right, yoga teachers, we're just taking a quick break from the podcast so I can share with you this awesome little magical elixir that I love called Magic Mind. They're our sponsor today, and that is pretty perfect because I've been drinking Magic Mind as I've been working on this podcast episode. Magic Mind is the world's first productivity drink that not only gives you the alertness that coffee and other energy drinks do, but also has ingredients to support memory, increase creativity, and boost focus. It contains minimal caffeine and the caffeine it does have comes from the matcha tea. It also has all natural ingredients, adaptogens to help decrease stress and nootropics to boost blood flow and cognition. I love that it helps me with my brain fog, but doesn't give me that jitters and crashes the way that coffee does. 
Since having a baby, my mind has been all over the place. And that's why I love starting my day with Magic Mind. If you are looking for more productivity in your life without the jitters that coffee and energy drinks can give you, then I would definitely recommend checking out Magic Mind. I actually have a special offer for my listeners from my friends at Magic Mind. All you have to do is go to magicmind.co forward slash yoga and use my discount code yoga at the checkout to get 20% off your first order. With Magic Mind's money back guarantee, any first purchase will be refunded. No questions asked if it doesn't meet your expectations. I'm confident it will though. So head on over to magicmind.co forward slash yoga and use the discount code yoga to get 20% off. All right, now back to the episode. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And one of the things I'd love to hear about too is just creating like the atmosphere and like the vibe of a class because obviously, you know, we have different themes for different styles of classes. And then there's just, you know, very different sort of atmosphere between say like a vinyasa flow class and a yin class, for example. So obviously we're going to want to have different playlists for those. And how can you kind of, you know, I guess, create these different playlists to set the tone, set the atmosphere, set the vibe for your class? Yeah. I mean, as you say, there's the yin yoga class, which you know, I would choose the kind of softer, calmer, more meditative music and keep that going throughout. Vinyasa, probably using, you know, the higher energy tracks to really um, support the clients in their practice. Something like Kundalini Yoga is a really interesting one. I'm working with a Kundalini Yoga teacher at the moment, and that kind of combines the two aspects. You know, you have these periods of like holding postures and really kind of inward meditative poses. And then, you know, you have the kind of really fast and furious breathing and the the moving. And so something like that is really interesting to work with in terms of music, because you can really go from the kind of softer tracks to the faster tracks and back again. And and that, again, is, is really, really supportive of the client's experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. And that, I think that definitely makes sense to me, like having these different sort of playlists with different tempos and that type of thing. Mm. Do you have any, do you have a, like a Spotify channel or something that people can go, you know, check out if they're kind of like, okay, I want to incorporate music, but I just don't even know where to start with like creating these things. Uh, yeah, I have a mixed cloud page where I post all of my sets. Um, so I'm Isabel, I S Z A B E L on Mixcloud. Um, there's also my website. You can kind of get in touch and I have created this, um, course specifically for health and wellbeing practitioners called DJ mystery to mastery. So it's, as you said at the beginning, it's a heart-based approach to the art of mixing music. And I talk about all of, you know, the things that I've touched on, in this um, in this interview and and loads of other things as well and really kind of break down from the very beginning the very basics so anyone even if you've had no experience in music at all um, knows what to do and how to begin and we kind of go step by step through the process to the most advanced techniques um, so there's the opportunity to create these flawless, seamless journeys in your classes. And I think that's, you know, that's what, that's what I'm finding. I'm getting so much feedback from the people I'm working with in this, in this area is they keep coming back to me and they're saying the clients are going deeper into their practice, deeper into their healing. When the musical journey is smooth and it goes, you know, from beginning to end with, with smooth transitions and really mixed well together And that is supporting them like never before in their practice. And they keep coming back to me for more for that. So it is really, really interesting the, you know, the the power that music can give in support of the practice. So um, yeah, that that's um that's online as well. DJ Mystery to Mastery.com. You can find out a bit more information there. Um yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think that that's a really cool opportunity and investment for yoga teachers. Because I think I'm not teaching yoga currently in this moment. Um, I just had a baby a couple months ago and was taking some time off and whatnot. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like my experience has been, you know, like I've said, is like, I love music. I understand the power of music yet mm-hmm. sitting down and creating a playlist is like, it's a lot of work. Like it's probably more work at this point for me than it is to actually create like my class plan and stuff, just because I'm more practiced mm-hmm. with that. But then exactly. it's like, I also find like sitting down and just pulling somebody else's playlist. It's like, it might get really close to what I want, but then I want to switch out some songs and whatnot. And mm. yeah, I think it's, I, I've definitely recognized, like I said before, the power of in my own practice being in a class that has a lot of, you know, really great music that just kind of, yeah. you know, hits really well. And I was also going to share, <laughs> I had an experience as a teacher really early on where I taught at a studio where the playlists were made for us. And mm-hmm. each playlist was for, I think there was like three or four playlists for each type of class. So mm-hmm. while every teacher was creating their own sequences and whatnot, it's like when you had a style of class, you had to teach kind of within that style. So like if it's a stronger power flow, more of like a level one vinyasa, you know, like a yin yang, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I was teaching and it's so hard to teach to like, a playlist that you're just not familiar with at all. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like you can kind of feel that energy, like not vibing together. Anyways, I was teaching to this playlist and I had a moment where I think I had them in like Malasana or something. So they're just taking a moment to breathe and to feel into their hips and some song comes on. That's probably one of those like 150 beat per minute songs. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, this is just not good right now. And so I just kind of made a joke of it. Like, Oh, like the playlist must be on shuffle. Like this song's <laughs> clearly not a good moment for this, and just like hit skip until there was one. And just I feel like yeah. that's an example of when we're not how we can use music, but like maybe not in the way that it's gonna influence people's practice in the most positive way. And I think that's it's those types of experiences where I think maybe sometimes people think like, oh, yoga is mm-hmm. better without music. Um, mm. So yeah, just I wanted think, to share that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And it's, I think it's always good to, to hear our, our vulnerabilities and, the, and our learnings in, in these spheres, because, you know, you know, without necessarily having any, you know, any background in music, you know, when something works and when it doesn't. Right. So like in that example, you knew when it didn't work, didn't work and and you will know when it when it works as well and how things the music can really can really support um and yeah I, I is it is it is it worth not using something when it can really make a big difference just in case it goes wrong or, or is it worth really trying to take time to learn and understand how it can feed into the magic that you're already creating as a teacher you know I would lean towards the latter obviously because I've seen that kind of payoff in my life is when I kind of go into something and and learn about something and incorporate it into my work for the benefit of all it kind of always pays off and you know I think this I I really understand that sort of um, hesitancy or nervousness around creating playlists but you know as you say it's it's practice and of course when we learn anything new at the beginning there's you know moments of frustration and or oh, challenge and stickiness but you know you can if you keep going and you just learn a few techniques and you you try a few things out and are willing to experiment and and learn through the mistakes, you know, there's a whole, whole world that can open up that is, is so life enhancing and so, um, you know, unique to, to your own offering. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. And I think, yeah, it's something that, like you said, at the very beginning, it's something that can be learned. And, you know, I've said this so many times on my podcast where it's just like, we can't learn everything about being a yoga teacher and a 200 hour yoga teacher training, or even, you know, our secondary 300 hour. And I think that this is one of those things yeah. that when we're trying to learn anatomy and cueing and um, poses and how to get people safely in and out of them and sequencing, you know, they're just music becomes one of those things that kind of gets pushed to the back burner. And, you know, what I do yeah. with the business of yoga often does as well. But I think that learning this as you start teaching and 
playing around with it, I think can be really powerful because like you said, it can help people get into a deeper experience. And I just, I really love like a a yoga class with with really well-timed music and that type of thing. One other thing I wanted to ask you, Isabel, is just around because so many yoga teachers are teaching online these days. And Mm. one of the things that I found, I work with a couple of studios and one of the studios as they were able to bring people back into the studio after the initial lockdowns, Mm -hmm. teachers were putting music on in the studio, but it just wasn't translating like through the Zoom, like Mm -hmm. through the microphone, essentially. Like it just, you can barely hear it. It kind of comes through a little bit glitchy. Do you have any Mm. thoughts or suggestions for anyone who's teaching, you know, primarily online and wants to incorporate music? Yeah, definitely work with DJ software or another piece of software because Zoom isn't set up for music. Most all music sounds pretty awful through Zoom, Um, but you can do it without very low cost or with not not really with lots of extra equipment, but you can set up um, Zoom to kind of run through a DJ software or another platform, which will make your music sound way better. Okay. Yeah, that's a good yeah. a good tip. I know I have one yoga teacher friend. I was doing prenatal yoga with her and she was able to like share the music from her computer, which was so nice because a lot yeah. of other people I've practiced with, it's like either the music's just playing on their end. And like you said, it doesn't sound very good. Or it was like, oh, here's, you know, like the playlist, pull it up. And then I'm like, well, in order for me to do that, I have to have like the Zoom room on my computer. And then I like to have like, you know, headphones in, but then I have to play the playlist like off my phone which is fine, mm-hmm. like totally first world problems here. But like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's just like when we're trying to enrich the experience, that doesn't really do it for the practitioner. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you're right. Share computer sound as a first instance in Zoom. Don't play anything through the speakers and expect that to sound good. Um, but share computer sound will, will make a big difference. And then the second bigger difference is using another piece of software like Tractor Pro 3. Okay, cool. Mm. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all of that. And the last question that I have for you is I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, the business lessons that you've learned through your career, through the business you've created, anything that you feel like you'd like to share with listeners today. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think the main thing is resilience. You know, it's just keeping going. When you run your own business, there are always going to be ups and downs. Um, when you're putting your heart and soul into something, they'll, especially there'll be a, a lot more of a charge there. And I think it's really, you know, it's really taking the challenges and seeing them as learnings and also taking the celebrations and wins and just being consistent and keeping going with it because um, you never know where it's going to take you. And um, get support. I think get support where you can. Um, I start off, I'm still mostly doing everything myself, but slowly, slowly I'm getting support. And that's really valuable, I think. Um, take some time off. I learned that very early on when I was um, promoting nights in London in the kind of early days of my music industry career. I suddenly realized when I was running my own business then why there are you know companies give a certain amount of time off per year it's vital to take weekends off or a couple of days here or there because when you're running your own business you can kind of be always on so definitely take some time off and some holidays and get out in nature and walk around and that sort of thing and I think the final thing is 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 keep keep learning and keep expanding you know for me when I feel I need to be nourished, I spend time with my teachers. I, you know, have mentor sessions with people who are, you know, further along their teaching career than me. And they're really valuable. And then, you know, le- like learning something new. I've recently done a music production course. You know, I've never, I, I've never made my own music. I've just DJed and kind of worked with it in health and well-being. And that was really beautiful to do. Just take two days off to learn something new and I I really got inspired again so 
um, yeah, I think those are my current top tips for kind of working, working in business. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those. I really resonate with everything that you just, you just shared there. And I think that I feel like learning about music is a good, a good example of like continuing to learn, you know, and continuing mm. to, you know, invest in something that might enrich your classes more and create like a better experience for your students. So I'm glad that you brought that yeah. up. And then I just wanted to touch on the taking time off because I think that that's, mm. that was something that I struggled with so much when I started working <laughs> yeah. for myself. And it was like, yeah. oh, I have all this freedom. So I'll just take like random Tuesdays off or whatever. And then it was <laughs> like, oh, I'm getting busier and now I can't take random Tuesdays off and I'm working like every day of the week. And it's like, okay, I need two back-to-back days off at the very least. I need to Uh take like some time off around holidays, you know, Christmas, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What else, whatever else I want, get away, step away. And um, for me, I found having help. Um, I have a couple of people who work with me part-time and it's been so helpful to have that. And then with having a baby and going on maternity leave, I mean, that was that was key for me being able to do that without having to like stop my business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Well, thank you for everything you've shared today, Isabel. I know we mentioned the website for your course. Um, Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere else people can go to find you, follow along, check out what you're up to? Uh, Yeah. So Instagram, I'm Isabel.x, I-S-Z-A-B-E-L.x. Also Facebook there. On Facebook, I have a free group which is DJ Mystery to Mastery which might be a nice way for people to kind of get a sense of of this work working with music um obviously there's the website DJ Mystery to Mastery my radio show on Open Lab is called Music Medicine um and I bring in a lot of the teaching and healing modalities that I work with into that radio show and it could be a really good portal for finding new music that would work for yoga practices as well so that's available online at openlab.fm and um yeah i think that's about it in this crazy digital world Mixcloud, obviously <laughs> i've mentioned to listen to sets and you can dance to those sets or meditate to sets um i've done a whole range of sets and i also put my radio shows up there so that's probably the resource for music as well Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. We'll make sure it's all in the show notes so that people can check you out. And yeah, thank you for your time today. This has been a really awesome conversation and has just re-inspired me to, to get back into making playlists and learning more about music. Yay, that's what it's all about. And thank you for having me. It's been a total pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode of the podcast. To find links, notes, resources, and everything mentioned in today and all episodes of the show, you can head on over to mbomyoga.com. You can find the podcast and myself on Facebook and social media at Mastering the Business of Yoga. And I would love for you to join the private Facebook community, Yoga Business Badasses. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please make sure you reach out to me at info at mbomyoga.com. And last of all, if you enjoyed this episode of the show, please make sure you hit subscribe and leave a review for the podcast. It would mean the world. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Namaste. Namaste.